we reach now the point where we will compute the features. We will compute the um, F0, the fundamental frequency, and the loudness. And we come up here with this setup, the session, and it's the DDSP spectral operations reset CREPE. -E. Well, let's take a look about this function. And this is a function to reset the global state of the CREPE to force module rebuilding. So at this point, we are here at the spectral operations. And if we go to the GitHub on the spectral operations, we see here import CREP. So what is CREP? We are here at github.com slash marl slash CREP. And CREP is a monophonic pitch tracker based on a deep convolution neural network operating directly on the time domain waveform input. So it was uh, from 2018, at that time it was the state of the art. We are now in May of 2021, so I didn't follow up what is the state of the art. Now um, I'm sure uh, things have improved. Uh, there are a lot of uh, great uh, research groups studying this um, pitch tracking problem. But this one is good enough uh, for our purposes and it's the one that is used by the DDSP library. So here we have further details of the uh, convolutional representation for pitch estimation, C-R-E-P-E, -E, and it's from the um, ICASP, so the International Conference on Acoustics, Speech and Signal Processing from 2018, and this is paper from the uh, University of New York. So here we are at the, uh, this paper, Convolutional Representation for Pitch Estimation. So they say that the task of estimating the fundamental frequency of a monophonic sound recording, also known as pitch tracking, is a fundamental to audio processing with multiple applications in speech processing and in music information retrieval. And they um, tell about some uh, techniques such as the PYN algorithm that is based on combination of DSP pipeline and heuristics and they perform well on, on average but there are cases which they fail to correctly estimate the pitch. So in this paper they propose a data-driven pitch tracking algorithm, the CREP, that's based on neural networks. And they show that the proposed model were you know, state-of-the-art by the, the time they published this, this paper. And here, PDF, we have here the paper where they will explain this uh, model. So we have here the architecture. So it's a deep neural network that operating directly on the time domain audio. And here is the architecture. So we have a 1024 raw audio samples and we have a convolutional layer size is 512 stride is 4 and they have max pooling 2 and 1024 filters and here they will have another convolutional um, layer the size is 64 and they have 128 filters so then they will go from 64 by 128 and there is another convolution no layers you also have some max pooling they have a series of convolutional layers so they go from 128 64 32 16 8 here they were keeping 120 filters now they decided to go to 256 filters then they reshape they go to 2048, they have this uh, F fully connected layer, and it goes to 360 nodes in the output layer that corresponds to a specific pitch value defined in cents. 
There are six convolutional layers that result in 2048 dimensional latent uh, representation, which is then connected densely to the output layer with a sigmoid activations corresponding to a 360 dimensional output vector y hat. And they explain that ascent is a unit representing musical intervals relative to the reference pitch and is defined by this function here where they use the F reference to 10 Hertz throughout the experiment and then this unit provides a logarithmic pitch scale where 100 cents is equal to one semitone then they also use uh, the resulting pitch estimate as a weighted average of the associated pitches according to this um, function here. However, they explain here that uh, for the library, they changed the um, weighted average. So this is slightly different from the paper. And this here only focuses on the neighborhood around the maximum activation. And they um, found that it's shown to improve the pitch accuracy. The target outputs uh, that used to train the model are 360 dimensional vectors where each dimension represents a frequency beam covering 20 cents and the same as the model's output. And the beam corresponding to the ground truth fundamental frequency is given a magnitude of 1. So they explain here they use the ADAM optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.002. They have here the uh, binary cross entropy between target vector y and the predicted vector y hat. And the binary cross entropy is given by this equation 4. Then the best performing model is selected after training until the validation occurs and no longer improves for 32 epochs, where one epoch consists of 500 batches of 32 examples randomly selected from the training set. Each convolutional layer is preceded with batch normalization and followed by a dropout layer with the dropout probability of 0 0.25. And they implemented using Keras and with a TensorFlow backend. So they also explain uh, the data set. They used um, the data set. Let's see. Um, they used two data sets. The first is RWC Synth, contains 6.16 hours of audio synthesized from the RWC Music database. And it's used to ev ev evaluate the BYN algorithm. So you can. Um, Check here the reference for this um, RWC music database. Then they um, explain the method methodology. So they trained the model using a five-fold cross validation, and they used 60-20-20 for train validation and test split. They evaluate um, the algorithm's pit estimation, measuring a raw pitch accuracy and raw chroma accuracy with a 50 cent thresholds. Then they compare their CREPE against the state of the art at the time, monophonic pitch tracking, and it was the PYN and the swipe. You also have reference if you want to understand what um, they're talking about here. Then they um, show the results. They compare their method with um, other methods. And here they have some conclusions. So they see that the robustness of the model could be improved by applying pitch shifts as dot data augmentation. So to cover a wider pitch range for every instrument. In addition to the data augmentation, a various source of audio timbre can be obtained from software instruments. There's the end synth data set is an example where a training data set is generated from the sound of software instruments. And here we have the reference and you can go further if you are interested in understanding. So it's a very interesting 
convolutional neural networks model that goes from the raw audio and gives you a pitch estimation, pitch tracking. And this is what they are using. So they are importing this CRE PE. And it was developed by uh, the Music and Audio Research Laboratory and the Center for Urban Science and Progress at New York University. So there are many interesting research going on at the New York University. They have this very interesting music and audio research group. So you should check out uh, what you're doing. So here they use CREP. Let's go back here. And they need to reset the global state of the CRPE to force model rebuilding. This is what they are doing here. Next, they are computing the features. They are just having this start time. They use this time to compute the amount of time it takes to extract the features. And they have here this variable audio features which will receive the return of this DTSP training matrix compute audio features and this take the audio as an argument and this is what we need to investigate now so it is from the DDSP training matrix.py and it's um, a function to compute features from audio. It takes here the audio that we recorded or we uploaded here. It also has some other arguments and they are set to defaults. So there's the number of FFT, it's 2048. The sample rate is the 16 kilohertz. And if you look here, also in the CREPE, they have um, somewhere, they say that they use a default sampling frequency. So the model is trained on 16 kilohertz. So if the input audio has a different sample rate, it needs to be resampled to 16 kilohertz. So audio features there will be this audio, this audio, and it will squeeze the dimensional. So it's a dictionary. Now we will have the audio features loudness, and then it will call another function from the spectral operations compute loudness, and it will take also some arguments like the audio, the sample rate, the frame rate, and the number of FFT. Then they have audio features F0 Hertz and audio features F0 Confidence. And they have this other function from the spectral operate, uh, operations compute F0. So we need to investigate further. So as we were talking about the CREPE, let's first investigate the function that computes the fundamental frequency and then we will see about loudness. So let's go back here and investigate compute F0. So it's on spectral operations from the DSP and this function is non-differentiable and takes input as a NumPy array. So we see here that it's non-differentiable, doesn't um, support gradients if you use this compute F0. And it's being used here to extract features. So it takes a NumPy array of single audio example, and the shape should be the audio length. Then it takes a sample rate in Hertz, a frame rate, so a um, rate of F0 frames in Hertz, and they use V3B decoding to estimate F0. So the V3B algorithm is a dynamic programming algorithm 
for obtaining the maximum a posteriori probability estimate of the most likely sequence of hidden states. So, this algorithm has found application in decoding the convolution of codes using in a CDMA, uh, CDMA and GSM digital cellular, dial up models, uh, modems, satellites, and is also commonly used in speech recognition, speech synthesis, diarization, keyword spotting, computational linguistics, and so on. And for example, in speech to text, the acoustic signal is treated as the observed sequence of events, and a string of text is considered to be a hidden cause of the acoustic signal. And here you can understand um, more about this algorithm. And this algorithm is used in a Viterbi decoder that uses the Viterbi algorithm for decoding a bit stream that has been encoded using a convolutional code. And you can also read about the Viterbi decoder here. And they use, they can use, if it's set to true, it can use Viterbi. Uh, decoding to estimate the F0 and then it, this function will return the fundamental frequency in Hertz the shape is uh, n frames and also the confidence in the Hertz estimate and it goes from 0 to 1 so they have a lot of steps here they compute the F0 with CREP, then they have the CREP predict, and they pass all these um, arguments, and then they will have the F0 in the confidence, and then they do some post processing on F0, so they will here add or trim to the expected length. They changed, of course, the type to be a fold 32, also some post-processing of, uh, of the F0 confidence and they also pedal trim to the expected length so this way now we will have the F0 and later on they will plot the F0 here and also the confidence going from 0 to 1 here we have high confidence of the estimate this part here these parts we see it's also high confidence, but then we have some low confidence areas also from here. So this is how they compute the F0 here part of the audio feature. But there is also this loudness, and that's what we're going to take a look right now. Let's close this. Let's go back to compute audio features here. We've seen this part here, compute F0. Now we will see compute loudness and see how they compute loudness. So the perceptual loudness in dB relative to white noise amplitude equals to 1. It will take several arguments. It will take the audio as a NumPy array or tensor and the shape should be the batch size and the audio length or the batch size. There is the sample rate, the audio sample rate in Hertz, the frame rate, so the rate of loudness frames in Hertz, the FFT window size, Range dB sets the dynamic range of loudness in decibels. The minimum loudness, loudness corresponds to minus range dB per frequency pin. Reference dB sets the reference maximum perceptual loudness as given by this formula here. And the default value corresponds to white noise with amplitude equals to 1 and 2048 FFT points. There is a slight dependency of the FFT size due to the different granularity and perceptual weighting. And you can use TF and then you can make this function differentiable by using tensorflow. 
So by the default is not differentiable. So df is set to false, but you can set it to true. And then most probably they will have here a part where they will use maybe NumPy and another part that if it's set to true, it will use TensorFlow, so exn, pick TensorFlow or NumPy. So if use the uh, tf, if use tf, else np, this is this lib here, which they're defining to choose between TensorFlow or NumPy. Here they make input tensors for TensorFlow, so they take the audio, and they make it tf flow 32, if tf or use audio if tf is false. So for NumPy they will use the audio. Then they temporarily um, have a batch dimension for single examples. They are doing this here. Always there is this if is 1D, else audio, or if use TF, else STFT NumPy. So here they are using the short time Fourier transform. So they use the TensorFlow version. If you want to make it differentiable or use the NumPy version of the short time Fourier transform. So they are doing this. They are taking the short time Fourier transform. They are, they are computing the power. Here they are calculated perceptual weighting. And they are using now Librosa. Here they get the frequencies. And here they have the A weighting also. A very convenient function in Librosa. So if you're not familiar with Librosa, I highly recommend that you take a look. It's a very powerful library, very used in music information retrieval, audio processing. They have a lot of um, pre-built tools. And here the loudness will be the power dB. It's calculated from here plus the A weighting. We've been talking about uh, loudness, a weightening power, but perhaps you're not familiar with these concepts. And here it is, um, some explanation from the book Fundamentals of Music Processing by uh, Professor Meinhard Müller from the um, International Audio Laboratories in uh, Erlangen, this is part of the Fraunhofer Institute. And here they will explain something about uh, the decibel scale, about loudness, and also with some examples. So, um, from a physical point of view, sound power expresses how much energy per unit time is emitted by a sound source passing in all directions through air. And we calculated previously, I just showed um, that they are calculating the power. Uh, when they're computing the loudness for the audio features in the, the DSP example we were talking about. And the term sound intensity is then used to denote the sound power per unit area. And in practice, sound power and sound intensity can show extremely small values that are still relevant for human listeners. And then it exists something called the threshold of hearing, which is the minimum sound intensity of a pure tone that a human can hear. So going further here, they have they calculate uh, some power here for this uh, Beethoven uh, excerpt from uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, conducted by uh, the maestro Karaya. And here there is an example how to compute power. And then it comes to loudness. So, dynamics and sound intensity correlate with a perceptual property called loudness by which sounds can be ordered on a scale extending from quiet to loud. And loudness is a subjective measure which not depends on the individual listener. Um, age is uh, one factor that affects the human, uh, human's ear's response to a sound, but also on other sound characteristics such as duration and frequency. And here we have some curves, we have the threshold of hearing, we have the threshold of pain, 
in this contour lines they um, can be approximately described by weighting functions and we've just seen something that we're using Librosa a weighting functions so based on psychoacoustic experiments this perceived loudness of pure tones depending on the frequency has been determined and expressed by the unit phone and this following figure here shows equal loudness contours where each contour line specifies for a fixed loudness given in phones the sound intensities over um, logarithmically spaced frequency axis and then these contour lines can be approximated by weighting functions and here for example we have these um, weightings and this defined by this standard um, IEC electroacoustic sound level meters specifications and we have A weightings B, C, D and here we have for example an equation for the A weighting and here in Librosa we have here there is this Librosa A weighting which is used by the DSP to calculate the loudness and we have some examples how to get the A weighting for some CQT constant Q transform frequencies for example there is also a perceptual weighting on different um, weighting functions and we can take a look at the source code and the A weighting compute the A weighting of a set of frequencies it takes as arguments of frequencies and the minimum dB and clip weights below this threshold and it will return a, weight, a, a weighting and here is the example so we see there is this um, weights 2 plus 20 times log so there is um, a function here should be something similar to what is explained here so this is uh, an example here for for example they will get a um, chirp signal with equal power and then the chirp signal with equal loudness and we can perceive some difference so this is with equal power and here with equal loudness So if you want to go deeper in these basic concepts, I highly recommend the Fundamentals of Music Processing by Professor Müller. It's a very good book with a lot of uh, examples. And then we can go back now to where we were in computing, extracting this loudness feature to use in our DDSP example. They, they set some dynamic range the average over frequency beam, they remove the temporary batch dimension, and they compute the extended length of loudness vector. Then they pad with minus range dB noise floor or they trim the vector. And it will return the loudness. So at this point now we will have our features and there's a dictionary other features it's a dictionary so the dictionary has some keys audio loudness f0 hertz and f0 confidence and then you can access the data as you want and then they are plotting boom they have here with by plot they are plotting the loudness F0 and F0 confidence and here we have our features so at this point we generated and computed some audio features that will be 
used in the next steps.